Welcome back to Angel's World of Food. We have another very special guest for you today, and we're going to take a trip down to Little Italy in Omaha to visit some of my friends. We'll also check our mailbox as usual and have another great musical guest to close out the show for us. I'm going to jump right into my quick recipe. We're going to do a simple vinaigrette. Now, I have a lot of friends tell me that they don't make these because they're intimidated by them. And I want to let you know that a vinaigrette is so easy. And once again, you can impress your friends because here at Angel's World of Food, we want you to feel like a chef. I'm going to start with some black peppercorns, whole black peppercorns. Mine are organic. I don't always do all organic, but I like to do it as much as possible. So we're going to put some of those in here, maybe. <laughs> All right, we have a mortar and pestle. These are not very expensive and they are so much fun. So we're just gonna grind up some of these peppercorns and it really does change uh, the flavor to me when you use uh, freshly ground peppercorns. Um, it just really adds a, an extra dimension to what I'm making. So you could, um, work on these for a while, but I think I have enough for my vinaigrette for right now. And I have, as always, kosher salt ready. So the simple thing to remember when you're making a vinaigrette is a three to one ratio. Uh, will you stick to this no matter what? Maybe not, there might be exceptions, but it really is a good rule to go by and easy to remember. So we're gonna start out with one tablespoon. I have a fig balsamic vinegar. It's aged just a little. Uh, one day we're going to do a show about these vinegars because wow are they a world all of their own. So we have that. Now I'm going to take this which I'm actually going to use again. But I'm going to go ahead and put out three tablespoons of a really nice extra virgin olive oil. Remember our ratio three to one. So that's three tablespoons of olive oil to one tablespoon of our fig, in this case, balsamic vinaigrette, uh, vinegar, excuse me. Now, the secret to making this emulsion work, because it's a temporary emulsion, oil and vinegar don't want to stick together, but we're going to tell them that they want to do that, is you put in just a little bit, and you're just going to take it down the side of the dish gently. Then you're going to start whisking. And we're going to whisk it very vigorously. That's going to help that emulsion set. Okay, and then I'm going to take a little more of my olive oil and I'm going to put it again gently down the side of the dish, like that. And I'm whisking. And I can tell that it is starting to come together. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of my olive oil in there. There we go. I'm just going to give it a really good whisk. I'm going to go ahead and throw in some of my kosher salt some of my freshly ground pepper. And since I have the fig, I'm not gonna use garlic or lemon or anything else in this one, but you can, you can really get creative with these and put other ingredients in them and e expand those flavor profiles. This is a simple one today. And it's gonna go very well for our theme for today, which is Italian food. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that back in here. And we'll have it ready to go. also have today before I came out to the show I made some bread I'm just going to bring this out onto here I think and I don't know about you but I really really enjoy having some fresh homemade bread and a really good vinaigrette to dip it in Mm. <laughs> That's delicious. 
So make your simple vinaigrette, expand on them later, make some simple homemade bread. Your guests are going to love it. I'm down here in the Hanscom Park area um, visiting one of my favorite restaurants, Lo Solo Mio. I'm here with the restaurants, restaurant owners, Lo Solis, and I'm going to turn this over to them and let them introduce themselves. Hi. Hi. I'm Marie. And I'm Don. We're the Donnie and Marie, the not so famous. Right. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> you can remember us that way. So, how long have you been in business here? 22 and a half years. Okay, since 1992. Correct. Okay, and were you already living in Omaha when you opened the restaurant? Yes. Okay. What, what led you to open up an Italian restaurant? Well, we are Italian. Right. <laughs> and uh, uh, we had another. Uh, business prior to this and wanted to get back into it. We've both been in the food business all of our lives and uh, Don has been a chef all of his life. And so we, uh, he, was on his, he's, he was on his way to uh, a uh, lumber yard going by here and saw a vacant uh, building and said well, this might be a good spot. We'd always wanted to open something. It was right. on this location. A unique area just because we live uh, in the area as well and uh, we have visited Chicago and St. Louis and we like the appeal of having a kind of an out of the way quaint neighborhood <laughs> location, not in a strip mall, or, so right. that's why we thought that this might work. And it definitely adds to the, the ambiance and, and the feeling of everything here. It's unique. It is, it's beautiful. Like it was an old grocery store prior to this. Really? Yes. So um, that's it. Just became then a restaurant when we made it there. Okay, and, so, and you're both for what an Italian. Well, and she's from Italy. I'm from Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> and what part of Italy are you from? Reggio de Calabria. Okay. It is uh, southern. That's down, southern. Yes. Okay. Although our menu reflects both southern and northern. Right. Okay, and so. Um, southern Italian food are more of the red sauces, is that correct? correct. And then northern are the, the creamy sauces. Yes, and more lighter fare uh, fish and okay. uh, the white sauces or naked sauces. Okay. Do you have a favorite? I do have several favorites. Uh, you can look at us and <laughs> we like everything on the menu, but uh, uh, the carbonara is one of my favorites. Um, I like some of the lighter dishes, although the Michelangelo is very good as well. Mm. So we have chicken piccata is a house favorite. So, so from what I understand, from a very uh, loyal patron, there's a car carbonara store. Called the pasta carbonara. <laughs> well, um, I was just giving a lesson because there are many lessons on the menu uh, of the way that food has. Um, uh, develop the names of the dishes. We didn't develop, you know, all of the names of the dishes. Some of them are just traditional dishes uh, from Italy. And carbonara comes from the word coal, um, which is a derivative of carbon and coal. Oh, okay. And uh, what it was is the Italian miners would work in the coal mines. And they would bring, bring their prosciutto ham with them, uh, and they would have a campfire, and they would cut their ham over the campfire. Uh, one of the ingredients in the carbonara is the prosciutto ham. And so, uh, black flecks of coal would, the, the wind would blow from the coal mine, the little black flecks. And so, chefs have represented that by putting the black cracked pepper in there, to, hence the name carbon carbonara. So the black uh, cracked pepper and the prosciutto and then a raw egg because they could carry an egg in their pocket and that gives it the shine that it gives to it. So that's the traditional way of eating it. Is that, what are, that is an excellent story. Thank you so much for sharing that with sure. us. I'm sure the viewers really like that background. And that's what we try to do on Angel's World of Food is learn about the world of food. Um, yes get more in depth is where things are coming from, why things are named what they are, and right. the history behind the food. 
knowing what's on your plate. That's right. amazing. And a rabiata is, uh, <laughs> well, I'll give you one more. You can uh, give me so, as many as you want. <laughs> a rabiata means aggravation in Italian. Uh, really? So uh, what that dish is named for, and that's, again, not a dish that we named. It's a traditional dish from Italy. And it is that name that because it has some spicy ingredients in there, the tomatoes and the capers and a little crushed red pepper, and it could aggravate your stomach. Which Italians we say agido, it gives you acid, you know, agido. <laughs> but arabiata could aggravate your stomach, so hence the, the menu name wow. is arabiata. That is awesome. And this was my very first place years ago to ever have tiramisu. Ah, oh, well, tiramisu, there's a story there. That means pick me up in Italian. And so that's kind of what that dessert does because it's very light and refreshing and it has the espresso coffee which can give you a jolt of little energy <laughs> so that's the name pick me up so it's just lady fingers soaked in espresso coffee dipped in there and then like marscapone cheese was a dessert cheese lightly whipped over the top and sprinkled with cocoa we tell people that it's it's heavenly that there's no chewing involved it just right. slides right down, and we personally take out all the calories and fat Ow. and wear them ourselves, so they don't need to worry, don't need to worry about it then. That's awesome. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Angel's World of Food. I'm here now with my very special guest, Sherry Potter, a very dear friend of mine. Sherry has her own company. Um, it's called De Tendenza, which means on trend. Sherry, I'm going to let you tell our guest about this. Well, I am a professional food stylist, and I met Angel in culinary school, mm -hmm. and we became great friends there. I'm so happy you invited me to be on your show today. This is so much Thank fun. Thank you. I I'm love glad to you're cook. Here. I love to cook. Besides taking photos of food, I really <laughs> actually enjoy cooking it. So um, I'd like to get started. Awesome. So okay. we'll go ahead and do that, and we can talk a little bit. Okay. And, perfect. Um, I know you wanted a white onion yes, for your perfect. recipe, and today you're teaching us how to make. I'm going to do an Italian. Um, marinara sauce. Okay. I love this sauce because it, it, it can be used on anything. Mm. Sometimes I put sausage in it, sometimes I put it over chicken, sometimes I use it for shrimp, mm. I, or just over pasta itself. It's just awesome. I started making this when my kids were little, but I have made it, I've really bammed it up since I've become <laughs> a culinarian. Awesome, awesome. Well, I can tell you it already smells delicious, and we haven't even actually made the marinara yet. So, And I know you have very fresh ingredients here. It just looks beautiful, so I'm glad we're digging in. So Perfect. just tell me a little bit about your corner um, of the culinary world, this Angel's World of Food. We just try to hit on all different things that you might not think of that have to do with food um, and learning how to cook. So tell me about your corner of the culinary world and what it's like. Um, I know you went to school to learn more about the food that you were photographing. That's actually true. Um, I, when I started my food photography business, I, I discovered that the closest I'd ever been to a restaurant kitchen was when I went to the restroom. <laughs> so I figured I needed to know a little bit more about cooking than that. <laughs> and I also needed to know how to talk to my clients who were, you know, were in the restaurant or hospitality right. industry. So by doing this, I've mm -hmm. uh, found that when I go into a restaurant to talk to prospective clients, I'm not afraid to go into their kitchen. I'm not afraid to talk the talk with them. It's, it's right. been a wonderful experience. Yes. And it certainly helped me with my own cooking skills at home. I've, Absolutely. Uh, now I'm, I've always made kind of the same basic recipes all the time, and now I, I branch out into all kinds of different areas. I bet. Um, one of the one of my my little tricks and tips so that I have for cutting peppers is I cut cut the two tops off okay and then I spread them open and then okay. I make them and slice it looks them, beautiful too. slice them real nicely nice. like that it's it's quite easy to do and then I can save these tips a little bit later for my salad oh oh yeah and then I've got these nice See, nice so awesome. even pieces for my for my uh, saute that I'm going to put together and I really just love the little tips we get from our guest of um, making use of as much of the food as possible um, I don't like to see wasted food, so that that's great. Thank you yeah, so much yeah. for that tip. And it's quick. You know, you just top the top, two tops well, off. And you're making a delicious, fresh recipe that our viewers at home can make themselves, and that's um, very important to us here. Um, we want everybody to know that they can cook. And that's true. Yes. And this recipe uh, has all 
other than the fresh ingredients that we have here, we are also using some canned ingredients that you can get from the store that we can quicken up the process. I make okay. homemade marinara, and mm. trust me, when you're dealing <laughs> with <laughs> gallons and gallons of tomatoes and, and mm. chopping and cutting, you don't want to do that with all the tomatoes. So it's easy enough right. to go to the grocery store and pick up some canned tomatoes, right. some canned sauce, and, and a little bit of our canned paste here to add some body and bulk to our, to our tomato sauce. Yeah. And it's quick. Too. And I know we can go to some of the, the specialty shops and get some of the canned tomatoes from Italy Correct. that actually are the best tomato you can get. That is actually So even true. better than the fresh ones in your grocery store. So mm -hmm. that's the only canned thing probably you ever hear me plug. <laughs> so. I love it, yes. And that's actually true. But most women... Um, have a can of tomatoes in their pantry or or if they don't if they start picking up a few of these canned ingredients they know that they can throw together a quick marinara and add a little bit of chicken to it or any of the other dishes mm. let's uh, get this oil going right, and we're going to saute okay. these together real quickly okay now you want to set on what oh uh, let's set it on medium high okay we can do that okay great the other thing that I always recommend if you're making a fresh marinara sauce is fresh garlic. Now I know it's really easy to buy what you have right from the from your shell or buy it right in the, right. In the jar already right. made up. But there's nothing That's as right. good as fresh garlic. It's easy to do. Doesn't it smell amazing? Mm, it does. Um, you just chop it up real nice and fine, and you throw it in your throw it in your saute after you get it going. So. And also, um, if you buy garlic and you cut it open and you notice there's a green stem running through the middle, uh, you really don't want to put that into your food because it's bitter. So you want to make sure you have a fresh clove of garlic and it'll be pretty much the same color all the way through. Exactly, exactly. That's one of those things we learn from culinary school. Yeah. Those are the kinds of things you do learn from culinary school. Little tips like that. Or if you subscribe to Food & Wine or some of those <laughs> fancy magazines, you can learn that Correct. as well. Correct. Is that enough oil for you? I think so. You Just can put a little more in there. Spread around. It's getting legs. Bit. Yep. We're about ready to throw that in there. You want the onion in just yet, or are you waiting on that? Uh, let, go ahead and throw that in. Put it in. Right. Okay. I we have one of those. That. I have one of those little nasty garlics here that we can kind of show that middle part. You can see the green right here. This little green in the middle. That's the little better bitter edge that we don't want to throw into our pasta sauce. There we go. Get this all going. I didn't put that in your pretty black bowl. I just went right for the gusto there. <laughs> no big mm. deal. Doesn't that smell amazing? Hey, do you mind if I stir a little bit? I would love it if you would do a little awesome. bit of stirring. I'm going to throw this with our, our piece of mm. here. Got a salad for later. That already smells so good. I know. So I get that going just so, just till it softens up just okay. a little bit, not okay. too long. And as soon as it starts to soften, I throw in the garlic. And the reason I wait on the garlic is mm -hmm. garlic burns really quickly. That's so if right. you throw the, your garlic in, the hot oil, you end up with this singed brown garlic Absolutely. that tastes just, just about as bitter as that green stem we just took out of it. So wait on your garlic till your, your vegetables here are starting to soften up just a little bit, and then you'll add that okay. to it. And okay. That is an excellent tip, too, for our viewers. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Okay, and then we're also going to add some mushrooms to that, and okay. then we'll, we'll cook those down a little bit. But let's add this first. And okay, get it you going. ready for your garlic? Oh, let's give that a couple more seconds. The other thing I'm going to use in here too, as soon as you get it done, is this amazing fresh ground pepper. I love what you said before about grinding up your pepper fresh. Again, it's almost like the garlic. It's the one thing if you can do, get a little mortar and a little pestle and put right? it together. It's so simple and it makes such a difference in your food. Just, it's, it's just amazing. It does. How it's these few things, and they're cheap. It's cheap to buy a whole big yeah. jar of peppercorns and have it around. Sometimes the pre-prepared things, you know, we think we're saving money and, and really we're not. It's true. It's so it's much more. True. And then you have the love that goes into the food when you mm -hmm. do things like this and yeah. that really does change. And anyway. it does impress our friends when they come over yes, and watch it us does. cook. <laughs> think, oh my goodness, look at the chefs go there. But Absolutely. actually we're just girls like them. We've just learned a few little tricks and we're always <laughs> happy to teach anybody anything. I know. Okay, I think that's... <laughs> Don't tell all of us. No, I'm just kidding. We do want to tell the really secrets. We want you guys there. to know you can do this. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go and get this going. 
I might put a little more heat on that to get that going okay. just a little bit. There and this go. sauce, since we're putting the mushrooms in, you really don't need any other meat with it. It really, the mushrooms give it that okay. nice body. So, you know, we can call this our mushroom marinara. So, oh, awesome. You know, we mm. wouldn't need any meat. The, the thing about meat, when you add meat to a marinara sauce, mm -hmm. it takes on a different flavor. So if you put chicken in, we get the marinara all finished up and we add some, from, some chicken to that. Okay. It, it takes on diff a different texture and flavor from the juices. Gotcha. So the same with sausage, you can do Italian sausage same way. Yeah. What do we have next? We have, We're going to have to do a little television magic here and get this rolling. A little bit of Beautiful. Nose. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Can I have some now? A little bit of sauce. You know, I just love these colors. Aren't they mm. beautiful? It is. It's so pretty. And we have some <laughs> special paste here. Just drag that out of there. And then you can let this simmer go. for about 20 minutes. Awesome. We're going to throw in our spices, simple oregano, bit of basil. I'm going to um, salt. Go ahead and make a swap here to the spoon. Okay. Here and we go. Just a couple little mm. dollops of pepper. Okay, and well. We have a wonderful marinara sauce. I'm glad that. Almost, uh, almost all cooked up here for you. 20 minutes later, we're ready to serve. We add it to some pasta, which we have over here. I'm glad our viewers are at home because I want all this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It'll be fun to eat it later. This is delicious looking. Oh my goodness. Okay, so where are we? We have basil. We do have some basil. What I do with the basil, this is just a little fun trick with our basil. I like to add fresh basil at the very, very end uh -huh. after, I've, after I've put my pasta in the bowl and my marinara sauce right over the top of it. Gotcha. We're going to do, it's called a chiffonade, and we're going to take all our basil leaves. We're going to roll them up like a little cigar here. And while you're showing them how to do that, I'm going to go ahead and plop this basil in here. Just we're going to take our knife and make some little thin cuts on it like that. Easy to do. And then everyone gets a, a bite of a fresh, fresh taste of basil. It's amazing. Kind of spread them apart a little bit. Okay. So I know that um, we have our pasta already pre made. We have some beautiful Ooh. angel hair pasta. Angel hair. Thank you for the I, requ I requested of the angel hair because of angel. And then we can we can dip our sauce right over the top of this. Easy, easy. Beautiful. Like so. Okay. And then sprinkle it up with a little Parmesan cheese. Gorgeous. A little fresh. Oh, that's beautiful. Basil. It's amazing. Wow. My family loves it this way. We serve it all the time like this. Just mm. I'm going to sit in a big that right bowl here. in the middle of the table, and everybody digs in. Well, so I think that's what we're about to do. Perfect. Well, Sounds thank good you. to me. Thank you. Hi, welcome back again. I just want to say thank you so much to Sherry Potter for being here with us today and showing us how to make that delicious marinara. Um, we went ahead and plated that quickly. Uh, normally, you do want that to simmer for about 20 minutes, but we're here on television, so that limits things sometimes. Uh, the more it simmers, the more flavors uh, absorb, and it just makes it even more delicious. So I just want to check our mailbox today, and I got a question. It said, Angel, how do I properly dress my salad? So, you know, we made the vinaigrette earlier, and a lot of times people pour it on the salad, and it's dripping, and <laughs> it's heavy. So I just want to show you. You take your vinaigrette, and you pour it down the side of your bowl just a little bit like this and then your hand sometimes is the best tool in the kitchen you just slowly turn your salad into the dressing okay and just move it gently around and that is the very best way to dress your salad I also want to thank our friends down in Little Italy for being with us today and just the celebration today of Italian food. I'm sure we'll have another one later. I love Italian food. And I want to remind you to go to our Facebook page, Angel's World of Food Facebook. Um, 
You can also find us and follow us on Twitter uh, at AngelFood7 on Twitter, and you can email me your tips, questions, photos, um, angelsworldoffood, gmail.com. Thank you so much for being here with us today, and remember, you can cook, so cook on. Hi, Angel. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm Allie Peeler, and I'm at La Casa Pizza on 45th and Leavenworth, and I'm going to play my moon tune for you. Hope you like it. Turn around, babe, take in the sights It's time you start seeing things from my sight You think you know, but you ain't never tried All I'm asking you is to open up your mind You'll be surprised by what you found A sight that was there all along You miss the moon dance across the sky If you only look and at the sunrise Turn around, babe, take in the sight Time you start seeing things from my side. <clears throat> you think you know, but I obeyed. That you never stop to watch the moon set. Turn around, babe, take in the sights. Thank you.